Gorgeous night in Miami. Roof is open, and the Phillies are in town. And it's a three-game series. The Marlins and the Phillies getting set to go here at Marlins Park. The Bobblehead Museum is open for business. So is the roof. And we're glad you're with us tonight. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. The Marlins bats trying to awaken, trying to get going. They see the Phillies in this weekend series, Tommy. And tonight they'll see them without Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, and they'll see a couple of lefties, uh, first two games of this series. Uh, John Lennon, the lefty going for Philadelphia. But just before the game, Giancarlo Stanton was scratched from the lineup. Now, he took batting practice. It's hard to really tell anything from, from BP. I know he's had a little bit of a, a sore shoulder. This could go back to a diving play that he made in New York, a diving catch off the bat of Kirk Neuenheis. But anyway, just before the game, a lineup change took Stanton out of the lineup. And the unfortunate thing, Stanton against John Lannon, a 438 hitter with one home run. And Lannon goes tonight for the Phillies. Uh, Marlins have seen a lot of lefties lately. Yeah, Lannon's one of those guys last year. He's a great insurance policy for Washington. Uh, he pitched a lot in AAA. He's a nibbler. They've seen him a lot. Uh, he's not an overpowering guy. Despite not having a win, I think the Marlins are pretty pleased with the way Ricky Nolasco has thrown this year. Ricky actually has thrown the ball pretty well, and he's thrown pretty well against the Phillies in his career. Eight and five lifetime against Philadelphia. Over the last five years, Ricky Nolasco has beaten the Phillies seven times. The Phillies got the band back together. I mean, Utley's rolling. Rollins is rolling. Michael Young has been a nice addition. Ryan Howard's bat is still in there. The Phillies right now trying to get their pitching straightened out. It's the Phillies and the Marlins first of three on Dominican Heritage Night. That's right. We'll have a special blitz. Friday night in Miami. Let's head out to center field. Allison Williams, Jeff Conan, all dressed up and some place to go. Hello. Hey, guys. Yeah, lots of places to go tonight. Dominican Heritage Night. Absolutely. Where are we going? Uh, around the ballpark. All lots right. of good things going on. We got some bands, 
Lots of fun stuff. Dominican Heritage Night and, of course, uh, a lot of players out of the Dominican Republic contributing to Major League Baseball. You actually had a chance to play in DR. What was that like? I did. In 1990, I played after my double-A season. I played uh, in Dominican Republic in the Winter League. And, you know, you tell, I tell you what, you realize why there's so many uh, good players that come out of Dominican. They are rabid, crazy fans of baseball. That's they, Their life is baseball down there. They, they grew up from a very early age, get on the field, and that's all they want to do is play ball. Well, and it's a number that has grown, especially in recent years. All time, only 3.2% of Major League Baseball players have come from the Dominican Republic. But in 2013, almost 9% of players hail from the country. And since 2008, 226 All-Stars, 32 of them are Dominican-born for almost, well, over 14%. So a lot of talent coming out of that island. And you can see baseball's influence and how it's growing, not just in the number of players, but the quality of players that we're seeing from Well, I Dominican. think you see those numbers go up, too, because a lot of almost every major league team has got academies down there. They've got much more, uh, a much more of a scouting presence, and they're discovering these young, talented players early on and then able to sign them. What's amazing, just one player in the Baseball Hall of Fame, Juan Marichal, from Dominican Republic, that number could increase drastically. It's in going to go up years. exponentially in the next few years. There's a lot of good players that have played there and are going to be eligible for that Hall of Fame and are definitely going to make it. All right, Dominican Heritage tonight here at Marlins Ballpark when we return. We will have the first pitch, game one between the Phillies and the Marlins. Ricky Nolasco looking for win number one on the year. He has pitched well, but needs to get some run support without Giancarlo Stanton in the lineup. First pitch coming up. Regan Alasco takes aim at the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies and Marlins ready to go here at Marlins Park. And it's the first of a three game weekend series. The Phillies come in at four and five. Of course, the Marlins looking for wins, looking for runs, coming at one and eight. Here come the Phillies. A little new at the top, Ben Revere in the leadoff spot, off to a slow start. But they've got the band back together. Look at Rollins at 316 and Utley at 333. Ryan Howard, a homer in five RBIs. Michael Young is on fire. Dominic Brown is in left. Lance Nix in right. Delman Young still on the disabled list. Eric Kratz is the catcher. 
Carlos Ruiz still serving a suspension. And John Lannon will hit ninth, and he will do the pitching. And there is Ricky Nolasco. That's a ball club, uh, Rich. Ricky Nolasco has had uh, some success against. He's had uh, some poor games, but a lot of good games. Eight and five in his career against the Phillies with a very respectable 3.86 earned run average. He was two and one against Philadelphia last year. So Ricky, the uh, all-time Marlins leader in most pitching categories, goes for win number 77 in his career and tries to, uh, as they say, get off the schneid and get his first win this year. Here's the Marlins defensively, and it's brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Biggest to change is Austin Kearns getting a late start in right field. Ruggiano and Juan Pierre filling out the outfield. Uh, everything setting up the infield with Greg Dobbs in there against his former team, the Philadelphia Phillies, and Rob Brantley is behind the plate. Mike Redman had to take Giancarlo Stanton out of his original lineup. Stanton with a sore shoulder. And in doing that, he had to put Austin Kearns into the lineup. Kearns is out in right field and reshuffle the batting order. Justin Ruggiano hits cleanup. Uh, Placido Polanco hits third. Well, it does a couple of things. Charlie Manuel knows uh, the, the offense that Stanton can provide. It also takes away from Mike Redmond's bench because with Kearns in the lineup, obviously Stanton won't be available to swing if that shoulder's sore, and it makes things more difficult for Mike Stanton or for uh, Mike uh, Redmond. Ben Revere leads it off, and here we go with Nolasco facing the Phils. His 16th career start against the Phillies. Pinch of pennies. First pitch is a strike. And off we go, it's 0-1. Jimmy Rollins, Chase Hutley to follow Revere, the newly acquired center fielder slash leadoff man. And he has yet to, to really get going. Last year hit 294 on base at a 333 clip. Sends one right back the box into center field. Revere a very good base dealer. He's swiped four bags already and he's at first base. Yeah Ben Revere was third in the American League last year with 40 stolen bases and talking to his manager Charlie Manuel he made a lot of comparisons Ben Revere and Juan Pierre is Charlie seen them both. Well now you get into the part of the Phillies order that is rejuvenated. And you start with Jimmy Rollins. Already five doubles, a homer, driven in five, a 316 average. And I think impressively, he has swiped three bases. Hit hard, Dobbs gets an out, fires to second, and the throw a little high. And Revere runs well. And he's in there at second base. Little indecision. You, you've got a quick choice to make. And there was some indecision on Dobbs. Do I step on the bag? Do I throw? He's close to first. If you step on the bag, You've got to make a perfect throw. If you go to second, you keep a, a runner from getting into scoring position. You, you at least get one out that way. But it's a quick decision that a first baseman has to make. And here is Chase Utley. And just like Rollins, Utley looks like he did, what, three, four years ago. An average over 300. Couple doubles, triple, two homers, nine driven in, and all the issues that he's had with the right knee seem to be solved. Yeah, everybody that's watched uh, Philadelphia this year, watched them in the spring, has talked about how well Utley's been running this year and always uh, has put up big numbers in his career against the Marlins. Utley with a runner in scoring position here, just underway. Nolasco's pitch on the ground. Solano to first. Revere is now at third. And Nolasco will have to deal with Ryan Howard, runner at third, and two outs. Now, Ricky against the Phils, eight and five in his career, an ERA of under four. It's well below his career ERA. He's had better success, believe it or not, at a 
great hitters park Citizens Bank Park. Where he is six and one in an ERA of under three and there you see the numbers for Howard. Just six hits but three of those have left the ballpark. Marlins have that Ryan Howard. Defensive alignment. Yeah the uh, big shift first time I think we've seen the. Uh, Exagger exaggerated shift that way. And again. We saw the Marlins do this. They keep Echeverria at short. And move Polanco the third baseman. Over in that second base spot now. Polanco certainly familiar with that. He played a lot of second base. He's won two gold gloves as a second base. Yeah. So yeah. That's natural. And Brantley comes up to fake a throw to third. And <laughs> I think he was going to throw it to Tom Hallion, the third base umpire. And Revere is looking at him like, oh, all right, go ahead. The last goes 2 0. Off speed pitch and a good one. When we have a, a hitter that's so exaggerated with the defense, you look at the, uh, the balls in play. And you can see that he will go the other way in the air, but most of uh, everything he hits on the ground is to the right side. But we've seen him hit so many home runs, especially at Citizens Bank, to left center. But on the ground, more than likely he'll pull it. It's amazing he has more home runs to left field than he does to straightaway right field in his career. And you're right about Citizens Bank, though, having watched Howard hit many home runs in that ballpark, most of the balls that he hits out at Citizens Bank ballpark are out of every ballpark. As strong as he is. And of course, Howard last year had to deal with the recovery from Achilles surgery. Which he injured at the end of that 2011 postseason. Ground ball, and there's Polanco to pick it up. The shift works. Nolasco pitches around the leadoff single, and we are underway in Miami. The Phillies and the Marlins. He's got a leadoff single and we're unable to score that run. Now the Marlins go to work on lefty John Lannon. And here's the Marlins order. Juan Pierre in the leadoff spot. Donovan Solano hits second. With Giancarlo Stanton out with the shoulder injury, he was a late scratch. Placido Polanco into the three spot. Justin Ruggiano slides up to hit fourth. Greg Dobbs hits fifth. Austin Kearns into the lineup, still looking for his first hit of the year. Rob Brantley is the catcher. Adene Echavarria. Is the shortstop and Ricky Nolasco will hit ninth. And this is John Lannon, who, although he didn't start the year in Washington's rotation, he finished the year there 
and actually had a nice finish. He was four and one with the Nationals down the stretch. Yeah, he had 24 starts for Syracuse. And as I mentioned, he was like a good insurance policy when they needed that extra pitcher. John Lannon got the call. He was actually a couple of years, 09 and 2010, he was the Nationals' opening day starter. Operation shutdown with Steven Strasburg necessitated another starter. Get over! Howard there to get it and beat Pierre, the former Philly, to the bag. JP in a one for 12 right now. And here comes Donovan Solano. There's a look at the uh, defense brought to you by Cleveland Clinic with Dominic Brown, Ben Revere, Lance Nix. A little different look in that outfield. Michael Young, what a terrific player he has been over his long career. Rollins and Utley, no change there. Howard at first and Eric Kratz behind the plate. Donovan Solano, a 290 start to his year. Fastball strike. Sounds of the game. We know that Eric Kratz has some good lungs, letting his pitcher know to get over there. Solano lines that one in the gap, left center field. Brown is there, and he makes the catch. Dominic Brown snares it. There are two outs. And here comes Placido Polanco. And Dominic Brown, we talked about it, Rich. He's one of those guys we've heard about for three or four years. Uh, an up-and-coming Philly. This is the first time he's played games for the Phillies in April. I mean, he's been called up a few times, and he's just 25, so he still has a lot of game left. Here is Polanco, and he takes inside. Polanco, a former Philly. Injured his last couple of years, and for Polanco, 90 games last year. Remember, he had the, the hernia surgery back in 2011. Lower back issues last year. A Philly twice over the three most recent years, and then four years earlier in his career. Interested to get Charlie Manuel's take on Polanco after the first few games of this series because from what we've heard from others and what we've seen Polanco is moving a lot better than he has in the last two years in Philly Rollins throws him out and Lannon goes one two three through the fish in the first that's a nine pitch inning for John Lennon. High definition tonight brought to you by H. H. Gregg. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Allison Williams, Jeff Conine.
Marlins Park in Miami. Another roof open night, although the roof tonight is closed just a little bit. It's just uh, over the first base stands, but everything else is uh, wide open. The rolling windows open in left center. And uh, Michael Young is uh, wide open for business right now. Young has been red hot for the Phils. And he stands in, a guy that has made his living hitting baseballs in volume. Look at the average, 302 career average. Young, Dominic Brown, Lance Nix in the second against Nolasco. Slapped into right field. Kearns is out there. And he makes the catch. Kearns getting the start for an injured John Carlos Stanton who's day to day with a sore shoulder. Austin Kearns has had uh, a couple of ABs but making his first start of the season. Now Dominic Brown. I think Rich if there's a. An unsettling issue that one's unsettling left center field deep. Pierre is there. And at 386 feet, he hauls it in. Dominic Brown's thinking right now where that would have been at Citizens Bank. <laughs> but I think the unsettling issue for Charlie Manuel is his outfield. He's got a few moving parts, in, especially left and right. If you want to bring your team to see the Marlins, experience Marlins baseball in a variety of affordable group packages, air conditioned comfort, incredible food and beverage options, Reserve your group today at 1877 Marlins or go to Marlins.com slash group. Lance Nix, the muscular outfielder, pulls one foul. Nix out in right field. That will be the domain, the Phillies hope, of Delman Young once he is back and healthy after microfracture surgery to an ankle. Back in November, they're hopeful, the Phils are, that by early May, Delman Young will be back. He's been starting to play in extended spring games in hopes of returning. Ricky's breaking ball is up and out. Nolasco 0-1. Of course, a, a very good start in the opener, but lost at Washington. Six innings, two runs, two homers to Bryce Harper, who I take it is homered again tonight. Bryce Harper got the uh, Nationals on the board right away against the Braves. A two-run shot, his fifth home run of the year. That's a big series, obviously, a weekend series, the first meeting between Two teams that are favored to get to the postseason Atlanta and Philly. Joe Espada, Mike Redman. 3 1 pitch. It's a strike, letter high. Knicks had already started towards first base. Knicks last year a, a good job in pinch hitting, getting some starts. He started 26 games last year. Ricky's 3 2. To right, Kearns is in and there. And a little skip and a catch. And Alaska goes 1 2 3 in the second. Inning and a half in, Miami and Philly are scoreless.
Sports Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T, the new wireless receiver from AT&T U-verse. Visit at and slash free your TV. Rethink possible. And by Just for Man Auto, stop is foolproof. Gray is over. Tom Waters outside, and so far for both pitchers, John Lannon and Ricky Nolasco, a scoreless ball game. Justin Ruggiano, Greg Dobbs, Austin Kearns against Lannon. Ruggiano moved up into the order with the departure of Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton, a late scratch with a sore shoulder. Really changes the uh, thinking and the game plan of John Lannon. Pitching to the Marlins lineup without Giancarlo. Lannon out of Siena. Ah. Fouled at the plate. Let's scout him, shall we? Scout the 28 year old. He's not overpowering, and we hear that a lot with a lot of left handers. A great Nationals insurance policy last year, he was, and he will nibble. And he looks like Andy Kaufman, though that's not on the scouting report. <laughs> I'm going to start delving into the report a little, little deeper. That's, that's at the very bottom. Yeah. Some advanced scout had that. That's like the last series of the year. Here we are facing John oh. Lannon for the seventh time. <laughs> that one is going to be. How's that scouting report look, Rick? <laughs> Out of reach from Lance Six. Nice play there by a fan. Well, the Marlins have seen enough of Lannon. As you noted, he was a, an opening day starter for the Nationals. As that Nationals rotation grew into what it is now with Zimmerman coming aboard, Strasburg coming aboard, Gonzalez traded for, Landon was kind of pushed out. Ross Detweiler beat him out last year. He said 11 career starts against the Marlins. Ruggiano did not swing, which is a good thing because he was halfway down to first by the time the appeal was heard. That would be the the equivalent of you get in your car and you're halfway home before they deliver the verdict in your trial. Ruggiano he wasn't, wasn't waiting around. It tossed the bat, trotting down, and right about now, the first base umpire, Chris Guccione, was saying, no swing. So here's Dobbs now. And Dobbs, like all the Marlins, have seen an awful lot of lefties. And they get one here tonight in Landon. They'll get another really good one tomorrow night in Cole Hamels. Marlins are already 0-5 against lefties. So this is the sixth lefty they've faced. And this is game number 10. Boy, Mike Redman has been tossing around different ideas. This is the, uh, it's really the 11th different lineup that he's used. Broken bat, Utley shovels it, Rollins will eat it. Dobbs is across. Phillies get the lead runner. And I say 11, even though this is the 10th game, but he had a lineup that had a Stanton in it, and that was the 10th different lineup. And then he changed that when John Carlo was scratched. So he's, uh, it's not because of lack of effort. People are always saying, well, why don't you change the lineup? Why don't you put this guy here? Mike Redmond's trying everything he's thinking of. Marlins are not getting on base, and when they do get on base, they're not driving in runs, and it's pretty simple. Kearns now, and he takes a strike. Austin Kearns had a solid year last year, especially as a pinch hitter. Here he gets a start, a last-minute start. That's some good at bats this year. He's appeared as a pinch hitter. He's just 0 for 2, but he's walked three times. That's some real patient at bats. Lannon, another changeup that floats away, and it's one and two. Well, maybe the haircut will do him well. Guys get home, they have a chance to visit the uh, the team barber, get all cleaned up. 
Guys, check in with Hugo. They need that uh, tightened up haircut. And it's not just the the players on the Marlins team, visiting players. Hugo has such a great reputation around baseball. That that's on the list when you come to Miami. South Beach and a visit to Hugo. Maybe you go to Hugo before you go to South Beach. 2 2. <laughs> and it's <laughs> that's usually back. the progression. Foul yeah. back to the screen. Or if you have a bad night at South Beach, they'll send you to Hugo. Marlins, nine games in, and the, the numbers have been pretty well documented. They've been shut out four times. They have just 16 runs, last in baseball. And Kearns fouls it off. Well, you think of those 16 runs too, Rich. Seven of those runs came in the Marlins' win. And they've been outscored 40 to 16. The starting pitching has, for the most part, been a pleasant surprise. Kearns takes low and in. We talked about how John Lannon can nibble, and I think he's shown that this inning, walking the leadoff man, Ruggiano, and now falling behind three and two right here to Austin Kearns. With Brantley on deck. Dobbs is running, and Kearns cranks one to left field. That goes Brown, and he's there to make the catch at the warning track. You talked about the good swings that Kearns has had, and you can add that to the list. Another good swing, a good at bat. He took the count full. He made Lannon make a few pitches. And by the way, John Lannon is happy to be pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies. Boy, there's a pitch out over the plate, and a good approach. And that's what happens when you see a lot of pitches, you get to that hitter's count. But Lannon, in his career against the Phillies, is 3 and 13. Here is Rob Brantley. Brantley has driven in a couple of runs. Busts his bat. Utley is there, and he makes the catch. And the Marlins leave a runner here in the second through two. Scoreless ball game. Game. Twitter poll tonight brought to you by AT&T U-verse. Will the Phillies extend their string of 500 or better seasons to 11? They were 81 and 81 last year. 
Hashtag Phillies can, hashtag Phillies cannot. Eight of those uh, years have been under Charlie Manuel. Five division titles for Charlie and a World Series championship in 08. A trip to the World Series in 09. Back to work for Ricky Nolasco, Eric Kratz. And then John Lannon and Ben Revere. Kratz has been a pro for a dozen years, and this is his first opening day roster. Here's the 0 1. And we're going to need help from the crack staff for this one. A product of Eastern Mennonite University in Virginia. Harrisburg, Virginia. As you like to say, one of the big baseball powerhouses. You never know where they're going to find you. That one fell back to the screen. And of course, Kratz getting a, a little more playing opportunity. Last year, he started 38 times. But uh, here's a look at the uh, Cholula hot sauce spotlight. I'd like to see the commercials for the meatpacking company. Yeah. Are they online? <laughs> yes, I'm told by the crack staff he he dresses up as a chicken in one of the uh, commercials. But the reason he's getting a little playing time is Carlos Ruiz Chooch is serving out his 25 game suspension for a stimulant, a banned stimulant. Not a performance enhancing drug, but a 25 game suspension nonetheless. But Chooch is here in spirit. I think the Phillies miss him, Tommy. I'm having watched enough Philly games over the last five, six years. One of the most underappreciated guys until the last couple of years. He made an all-star team, and I think people started to realize how good he was. I think some of the pitchers miss him, too. <laughs> Kratz pops it up. Solano's out on the grass. Kearns is behind him, and Solano makes the catch. Tommy would like to... Tip our caps to Carrie Montano. She's the principal at one of the Marlins Ayudan partner schools, Terra Environmental Research Institute. And she's been officially announced as the principal of the year for Miami Dade County. So, congratulations to Carrie. Thank you for doing what you do. And it's equally special for the Marlins Foundation that uh, she's a principal. A Marlins Ayudan Partner School. Well, congratulations and congratulations to all the teachers who are out there in all the different schools from the elementary level all the way through high school. Especially the ones that had Tommy Hutton. <laughs> Here's the 1 1. It's breaking ball down low. That wasn't too much of a problem. I just always had to keep my grades up so I could play sports. That's right. Stay eligible. <laughs> Free and easy. Ricky Nolasco tonight looks good. Trying to pick up his first win of the year. Ten or more wins for Ricky. Six of the last seven years. Atlanta really didn't have to change uh, sleeve colors, shoe colors, wristband colors from national red to Philly red. 3 2 coming. Knocks one in the left field. Pierre isn't going to get this one. It's in the gap and on the way to the wall. And John Lannon has got himself a one out double with an aggressive turn at second base. Boy, a guy who came into that at bat with an 097 career average has hit the hardest ball of the night so far for the Phillies and rightfully so Juan Pierre not playing deep shading him a little bit toward the line and that ball got over his head and into that gap Landon has doubled here comes Revere now there's one out it's the top of the third if you just happened by. 
weekend series with the Phillies breaking out. Revere lined a ball into center for a base hit in the first. But Nolasco got three ground ball outs from there, and Revere was left at third base. Three line drive outs in the second. The Phillies, Charlie Manuel, they do not expect home run power from Ben Revere. He has over a thousand major league at bats and has never homered at the major league level. Revere out of Lexington, Kentucky, came to the Phillies in the Vance Worley trade. Although I suspect it's better known right now as the Ben Revere trade. To Twins fans. This is a guy that swiped 40 bags last year. A guy who, who did his thing in the minor leagues too. Got on base, hit over 320. Had 160 stolen bases as a minor leaguer. It's interesting that the National League East rated the Minnesota Twins for a pair of center fielders. Leadoff hitting center yeah, fielders. Denard Span to uh, Washington and Ben Revere. Two two coming. Off speed roller in the hole. Echevarria quick release. Terrific play. Wow. Dobbs digs it. That's a fast man. And Echevarria like lightning had to release it and get him at first. Have to make the choice too. And uh, he made it. And it was the right one. Do I backhand this ball or can I get there in front of it? He got there. And then with that flip throw still got enough on it. To get the speedy Revere. Good stretch too by Dobbs over at first. Now Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy bounced out. His first time up. One of the differences in a leadoff guy like Revere compared to a Jimmy Rollins for so many years we saw him at the very top of the order for the Phillies Rollins could give you those home runs every once in a while he'd give you that home run pop we talked about it 23 career home runs against the Marlins. Long time for Lannon out there on the bases. Breaking ball and a strike. Why well, the Nationals are roughing up the Braves right now. A 4 nothing lead. At home against Atlanta. Julio Tehran has not had a great start this year. He's one of the top prospects for the Braves. He didn't have a great year last year in triple A and he's not had a good start this year. Well they're hoping and we saw Mike Miner and they're hoping for guys like Miner and Tehran at the back end of that rotation to really take charge. Rollins with a count one and two. Utley's on deck. The last go to the plate. And it's pulled foul. He'll change. Little splitter from Ricky and Jimmy out in front. Rollins is 34, and that's one of the themes for this Philly ball club. His age. You've got Rollins at 34, Utley at 34, Howard's 33. The Phillies added Michael Young, and he's old at 
36. Yeah, but they say in tremendous shape. Rollins pops it up infield. Echevarria is there. He makes the catch, and Ricky Nolasco has put three scoreless in the books. It's the bottom of the third. The Dominican Republic, of course, pretty darn proud of how the World Baseball Classic turned out. They uh, dispatched Venezuela, and then the U.S., and then knocked off Puerto Rico for the championship. And, Tommy, we can't celebrate anyone's heritage night without food. And this awesome. is what we got in the booth. This was the official good luck charm, right, of that uh, Dominican team, the plantain. We've got the plantains. We have some shrimp. Uh, we have some... Nice sausage, some pork. It's uh, you caught me getting some of the pork here. Delicious. <laughs> so uh, we'll have this around. You want some? Yeah, but I don't. Uh, it's it's bad manners to eat on oh, camera. Okay. So. No, we'll get we'll get. Hit. Hey, it's not going anywhere. Well, it's not going to go anywhere. No. <laughs> now we can eat. Thank you. Our thanks to director Jim Holly for then allowing us to snack. Danny Echavarria, Ricky Nolasco, and Juan Pierre. Thanks to the folks who. Brought us the Dominican treats tonight. And remember, our goal tomorrow night is to have Italian Heritage Night. No, we're gonna we're gonna have the Cuban sandwich. Oh, that's right. With Jose Fernandez pitching yeah. against Cole Hamels. That's our own little promotion in the booth. Yeah, Cuban sandwich night. Marlon's trying to get on the board. Echevarria has had a great start. Defensively, but offensively trying to get going. Fernandez gets the start tomorrow night, and Cole Hamels is his opponent. So if you don't have plans for tomorrow night, good night to come out to the ballpark or join us here on Fox Sports Florida. Watch the 20 year old out of Cuba. It's certainly a must see. And he'll have a, a different challenge. Ball struck well. Yeah, he will. This Tough is a Philly lineup. A lineup stocked with some more veteran hitters than he faced in New York. Guys like Rollins and Utley and Howard. Some good left-handed hitters. Guys who are all off to a uh, good start, especially Utley and Rollins. And then Michael Young, who's tearing it up right now. But a couple of scouts that are here tonight, we were talking to before the game, and they saw Jose pitch in New York. And... We're uh, raving about the uh, the youngster. Well, Landon doubled off Nolasco. Let's see if Nolasco can retaliate. Though that word was bounced around a lot today in the discussion of the Dodgers and the Padres situation. 
if you've been under a rock, you haven't heard the discussion, nor have you seen the highlights of uh, Carlos Quinton charging the mound and knocking uh, Zach Grinke into next week. How do you think the uh, the crowd in Los Angeles will be Monday when the Padres uh, invade Dodger Stadium? Pitch misses outside, and it's two and two. And evidently, Grinke's going to have surgery tomorrow. Out eight weeks at least. Wow. Here's the 2 2 pitch. The last goal liner, and Ricky rips one into right center field. So both pitchers have had the best swings of the night, Landon and now Nolasco. All right, if you were under a rock and you missed it, here are the highlights or low lights. This is a 3 2 pitch in a one run game in the sixth inning. Quinton and Grinky. Had history between each other. You saw when Quinton came out in front of the plate, Grinky came down off the mound and had something to say. Matt Kemp was in the middle of it. Boy, there were a lot of things that happened. Uh, one of the stories was uh, out in the parking lot. Pierre, little bunt, and it's going to roll foul after the game when the uh, Padres were going to their team bus, which is near where the Dodger players park. Uh, Matt Kemp and, and uh, Quentin had to be separated. Carlos Quentin is a tough dude. I mean, one of the toughest and strongest. But get, gets hit a lot. He does. With the way he stands and his approach. I don't think there's any question that Quentin is at fault and will get suspended and should be suspended. You just wonder what would have happened had Grinky not come off the mound and said something and just turned away or at least done a hey my bad. I wonder if that that will be in the umpire's report. The umpire they threw him out had to have heard though what he said and I've never read what he said. They did not. They one of the they umpires might not divulge that. One of the umpires commented on that after the game and said until they file the report the next day then they will talk about it. Pierre swings and misses. It's one and two. I know when we have altercations up here, you, you usually just say, my bad. I do. And then our producer, John. I don't charge you. Our producer, John Sulcer, files the report. <laughs> Here's the one, two to Pierre. And Pierre takes up. John Lannon. And then Cole Hamels. And on Sunday, Roy Halliday. And Kevin Slowey. Liner off of Lannon. Rollins picks it up, takes it himself, but he can't get Pierre. Pierre hit it hard. Nolasco is out at second, and there are two outs. It's copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. That ball looked like it was ticketed to center field, but uh, deflected by Lannon, and Rollins was right there to get the out at second base. No chance for him to double up, get the double play on JP. Here is Solano. Lannon, good move to first, and he chases Pierre back. It's one of the things that. Miami has yet to get going and that's the running game just three stolen bases Pierre has one of the three Justin Ruggiano has the other two. Has some other interesting news uh, around baseball the fact that the uh, Boston Red Sox had their uh, consecutive sellout streak snapped 120. Nearly 10 years of sellouts at Fenway Park. The Phillies have the longest National League sellout record. 257. Which has been snapped though. Yes, that yep. was that ended last year on August 6th. Quick pitch, a little slide step, and more often than not, when a pitcher does that, he breaks his rhythm, he has trouble throwing strikes. Landon misses, it's 1 and 0. Oh. Oh. 
Solano fouls it back and out of play. Andy Pettit scratched with a uh, sore back. Michael Morse, the uh, Fort Lauderdale product, suffers a fracture on his hand. Yeah, he got hit by a pitch. Well, he's off to a terrific start to, I believe, five home runs. It's a small fracture on the little finger on his right hand. Out for a week, they said. To right, Nix is there, and he makes the catch. Marlins and Phillies have played three. Neither have scored. Bit of a moon out tonight. Marlins and the Nationals will be here on Monday, 7:10 start. You can get all the all-you-can-eat seats for just $22. And on South Florida Heroes Monday, all military veterans and first responders will get complimentary tickets at the Marlins Park ticket office. Go to Marlins.com today. One of those artsy shots that uh, our critically acclaimed producer captured when he was out and about on his day off in Washington DC it's won uh, won him many awards Chase Utley Ryan Howard Michael Young Ricky throws his strike Nolasco hasn't walked a man hasn't struck out a hitter Utley bounced a second back in the first Ricky got him up and in with a fastball Ball and a strike. Over the last five years, Ricky tied for first most wins against the Phillies, seven. Tied with uh, Mike Pelfrey. It's always interesting to compare numbers, especially guys like Utley or Nolasco, who have been in the division for six, seven, eight years. And see how they've fared. The amazing thing to me is that Nolasco has pitched so well at Citizens Bank Park. He's six and one with a two nine eight ERA. Out in front is Utley. Hooks it down the line, and it's into the corner of foul ball. Well, the Marlins kind of had a stretch a couple of years, two three years, where they played well against the Phillies in Philadelphia. But the Phillies just killed them at home. So Phillies have been a good team in South Florida. Ah. 
Good breaking ball, and Nolasco gets his first strikeout. And as Ryan Howard comes to the plate, we check in with Allison Williams. Hey, Allie. Hey, Waltzy. Now, I know you guys got food for Dominican Heritage Night, but I got fun and games. Dominoes. They were handed out to several fans, about 100, as part of a ticket deal, the promotion for American or Dominican Heritage Night. And it is a very cool set of dominoes. And I don't know how to play, but I think I'm going to have to learn. I used to know when I was little, and I think I've completely forgot. Also here tonight, the Pachanga Band. If you guys remember, Sun Life Stadium a few years ago. That was one of your big moments. It was a very big moment for me, actually. And I think I'm going to have to go revisit the Pachanga Band, which would be uh, certainly a favorite of a lot of the Dominican players that have played for the Marlins. There's been 50 all-time, only one currently, Miguel Olivio. But uh, there's been a lot throughout the history of the Marlins, including names that fans certainly know well, like... Hanley Ramirez and Jose Reyes from last year, Juan and Carnassian, as well Emilio Bonifacio from last year as well, who the, the fans certainly remember. And uh, over 1,100 games for Luis Castillo played in a Marlins jersey from DR. So fun night here at the ballpark, and I think the Pachanga Band is calling my name. I'm going to make my way out there a little later. Very nice. You Just know the difference, Rich, is, is we're up here eating Dominican food. And Allison's just down there learning how to play dominoes. You match up the numbers. That's what you have to yeah, do. Yeah, it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I used to play. It's just been a while. I think the amazing uh, statistic on Dominican players is over all the years and the, the many, many Dominicans that have played in the major leagues, only one Dominican's in the Hall of Fame right now, Juan Marichal. That's going to change, though. That's going to change. You get uh, Pedro Martinez, Albert Pujols. Possibly a Sammy Sosa, Vladimir Guerrero. That ball's hammered. Right center field and deep, and it's going to bounce over the fence. Ryan Howard's got himself a double. That was uh, in Juan Francisco territory, but well short. Howard hit it well, but uh, not that good. Pitches up. Ricky's been able to keep most of his stuff down tonight, but that one got up. And it's a mistake pitch to a tough hitter in Ryan Howard. By the way, we haven't closed the book on that story. Francisco's home run the other night. Many of our uh, crack staff weighed in on Twitter. At near the end of that game, Lee and uh, Placido, that Francisco's home run, 459 feet true distance off that white sign. Stanton's scoreboard buster is still the longest at 462 last year against Moyer. Right off that health sun. Facing of the second deck. Almost straight away center field. And that was Juan Francisco of the Atlanta Braves. Young. Ricky gets him to pop it into right center field. Kearns and Ruggiano. And Kearns makes the catch. In case you missed it, here's what 459 feet true distance looks like. Well, Alex Sanabia knows what it looks like. He doesn't want to revisit it, but that ball was crushed by Francisco. Now, the true distance takes into account trajectory, height of wherever the ball lands. And that's where you come up with 459. Dominic Brown now. Brown 0 for 1. He hit a ball pretty well to left field his first time up. Brian Howard, a one out double, two outs now, and Brown takes in. This is Dominic Brown's first opening day roster, as you pointed out. Not a great homestand, just four for 22. Watching Ricky early on this season, there's the change up there, the splitter. He's had good velocity. Now, there was a period of time last year where 
he was upper 80s, but he changes it. He'll still throw fastballs upper 80s, but he also likes to reach back and get 92, 93 every once in a while. John Mayberry Jr. also one of the outfielders that the Phillies have used. Big curveball for a strike. Tomorrow night, you'll want to be with us. Jose Fernandez start. Marlins live, driven by your South Florida Honda dealers. Starts things at 6.30. Cole Hamels against Fernandez. Jose's first home start. Frank Fort with a terrific feature on his incredible story. Now you'd like to see a, a lot of support out here tomorrow night for Jose Fernandez. Two and two. Phillies a four and five start and they really struggled early last year. They were 37 and 50 out of the gates and had to charge late to get to 500. Breaking ball and Velasco knocks it down and not in time at first base. Dominic Brown beats it infield hit. Howard now at third base. And Alasco has to face at least one more hitter in the inning. I think if Ricky initially picks up this ball, finds out where it is, he has a chance. But he was kind of turned around. He knew that he knocked it down, but wasn't quite sure where it was. And by the time he got it, Brown has pretty good speed. He beat it out. But the key is that he knocked it down and kept it in the infield. Now Lance Nix. Nix has the look and the build of a strong safety. has to smother it. Good job by the young catcher. It's a, a situation you're a young team. You've really struggled. You get in a situation like this and you know you're Brantley. You've got to make that stop. You've got a runner at third. Ball in a strike to Lance Nix, whose younger brother Jason played for the Yankees last year. Nix was a high school football player in a terrific place for high school football, Midland, Texas. 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. It's 6 1, 2 20. Yeah, he had some good high school football in Texas. He was a quarterback. Of course, uh, Midland and Odessa are close to each other. I believe Permian High School in Odessa was the high school that uh, Buzz Bissinger visited to uh, write Friday Night Lights. Crack staff, is that correct? Also Thank one you. of the top uh, high school quarterbacks in Texas. Big app done. That's right. Who made an appearance on the show the other night? He and Alex Sanabia dancing around. Breaking Alaska for shutout innings.
Brought to you by Honda. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel-efficient Hondas. And by Checkers. Feast on. Cleveland Clinic fourth, Miami and Philly scoreless. And for the Marlins, a rough night so far against John Lannon. And the Marlins have to face Lannon without Giancarlo Stanton. Not that Stanton was lighting the world on fire so far this year, but against Lannon, he has very solid numbers. Well, that's the unfortunate thing. Seven for 16, a 438 average against Lannon with a home run. So the bat and uh, the presence in the lineup is missed. And this is his spot in the order. Placido Polanco slid from the cleanup spot up to number three. It's Polanco and Arugiano and Greg Dobbs against Lannon. And a strike. Really a changing of the guard in the National League East last year. The Phillies had a run of five consecutive National League East titles. In fact, two seasons ago in 2011, they won 102 games. But injuries, age, caught up with them last year, and of course the Nationals and the Braves caught up with them. Saw their young, successful general manager, Ruben Amaro, here tonight. They get a few decisions next year. It's the last year on Charlie Manuel's contract. Stroked on the ground in the left field. Polanco has a hit. The leadoff single. Miami has their second hit of the ball game. Velasco has the other hit. It almost sounded like this pitch got in on Polanco a little bit, but just out of the outstretched arms and the diving Michael Young. I like that super slow-mo look. I love the concentration. When you see that shot, you, you usually focus on the bat and the ball, but I love to look at the eyes of the hitter. Ruggiano takes a breaking ball for a strike. Ruggiano walked back in the second. Only walk allowed by Landon. It was without a strikeout in this ballgame. It's a six-game hit streak now, Rich, for Placido Polanco. He has been the Marlins most consistent hitter since the start of the season. This is game number 10. Ruggiano rolls one out towards Rollins to Utley. Little double clutch. And uh, Polanco and Utley with a meeting out there at second base. Ruggiano hustling down the line, beats the throw. Up comes Dobbs, and up comes Fox Saturday Baseball tomorrow. Three great matchups, Braves and Nationals up in D.C. The Giants and the Cubs at Wrigley, or the Rays and Red Sox. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Chevrolet tomorrow, 1230 Eastern. Dobbs in 0 for 1. Ruggiano a threat to run. Lannon comes home and misses down low. I said Andy Kaufman, part of the crack staff, thinks despicable me is the lookalike <laughs> for John Lennon. Ah! 11th round draft pick out of Siena and a free agent signed by the Phils. There you go, now Tommy. What do you think? I like the Andy Kaufman comparison. Yeah. All we need on John Lannon 
little longer sideburns. Got him picked off. Howard's going to make a uh, bobble and unable to make a throw. That's a stolen base for Ruggiano. Yeah, I mean, two little bobbles in this inning that have so far cost the Phillies to this point. They had a double plate turn, but Utley had a little trouble getting it out of his glove. They have Ruggiano at second base, and Howard has trouble getting it out. You know, Howard did the right thing in coming towards the pitcher, but the throw was offline. Yeah, just a bad timing. He, he didn't get a good throw. Out! He's picked off. Ruggiano did not get back to the bag. And so the Marlins lose a runner in scoring position on a nifty move by Lannon. That's kind of the opposite turn. This is a real difficult move, and Lannon's one of the best at it. Rollins sneaks in, and Ruggiano comes up and tries to sneak around Rollins, but no chance, just a quick pickoff move. But you know what? You have to know that. If you're a runner, if you've had trouble scoring, if you're one and eight, you have to know that guy has that good pickoff move. Dobbs fouls it down the first baseline. As we've noted from day one, the Marlins don't have boppers in their lineup. In fact, they have the one bopper, and he's not in the lineup, Giancarlo Stanton. And as you pointed out on uh, numerous occasions, you have to do the little things right if you're going to score runs. If you aren't able to do the big things, like get the ball out of the park. Miami's hit just two home runs. And this is game number 10. So if you're not hitting home runs and your on base percentage is just 287, which is 13th in the National League, you got to run the base as well. You got to move runners. And when you have the opportunity, you've got to score them. 2 2. Dodge swings and misses. And the Marlins' fourth inning. Goes in, up in smoke just like that. Scoreless ball game back after the sports injury prevention message from the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Ball game in the fifth. Time now for the Just for Men Auto Stop foolproof stats. Home run per at bat all time against the Fish. Brian Howard's hit 34. His rate is a little bit behind Barry Bonds, who's a little bit behind Prince Fielder, who did his damage, of course, as a Brewer. Now doing damage as a Tiger. What a comfortable spot. You get the ability of a Prince Fielder, and you get to hit behind Miguel Cabrera. Nolasco. 
has been putting up zeros. The Phils have four hits. They've left four on base. Here is Eric Kratz. The crack staff asleep at the switch. Still looking for the mascot for Eastern Mennonite University. Kind of tough on the crack staff after a, an off day. You know, sometimes they have a little trouble regrouping. Aha, the Royals. And they're in NCAA Division Three in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Herm the Blue Lion is the name of the mascot. Both the Royals in uh, Kansas City also have a lion as a mascot. A, a more lovable one in the left field. Pierre picks it up. Wonder if Eric Kratz remembers all that. He, you know what? That's our homework assignment. Is to talk to Eric Kratz before tomorrow night and get the lowdown on Eastern Mennonite University. Well, now it's a, a bunning situation for Lannon, who doubled his first time up. You and I were talking before the game about the, uh, the coaching staff. The guys on the bases for the Phillies be a pretty good old timers game. Oh, you're right. I mean, the, you've got Ryan yeah. Sandberg at third, yeah, Juan Samuel at first. Hall of Famer over at third in Ryan Sandberg. Over 282 home runs. MVP in 84 and then Juan Sam well had a, a real condensed career but he had some years that were incredible and the assistant hitting coach they have two hitting coaches pretty good one himself it's Wally Joyner to go along with Steve Henderson who's the hitting coach see, I'd like to see a, an inter squad game between the Phillies coaching staff because I think Charlie Manuel could still bang out a couple hits yeah he could DH and the Diamondbacks staff which has got uh, Trammell Tram Williams Matt Williams of course, Kirk Gibson. Chuck Nagy could start the game. Brantley picks up the bunt and throws a, a change up down to first, but in time to get Lannon. Well, he, he looked at second, and I think Rob Brantley had a thought of going to second base and then changed, changed his mind and maybe didn't have the greatest of grips, but was able to complete the play anyway. Nicely done by Lannon. Boy, the slow mo is great. Look at the concentration on Brantley. Look at his eyes. Now he picks up the runner. He, yeah, now he changes his mind. <laughs> That's a great look. Another bunt. Nolasco pounces and flips, and Dobbs can't hold it. Ben Revere is aboard. Nolasco had to hurry the throw, and it looked like it handcuffed Greg Dobbs. It's not an easy play for any first baseman because you have the pitcher that's not too far from you. And a lot of times you're not sure where the throw is, how it's going to go. It's a little low. It's certainly catchable. We'll see how it's, how it's ruled. And it's uh, going to be an error charged to Ricky Nolasco, even though that ball was catchable. So E1, you've got the threat of Revere running. You've got Rollins, who's pretty good at putting it in play. And, of course, Kratz is at third. So the Phils, with one out, have a great opportunity here. Don't, Middle infield is back for two. Don't be surprised if Revere runs early. Alasco's thinking that way. The, the little bit of good news is that you don't have a whole lot of speed at third in the runner and cracks. By the way, we showed the Phil's coaching staff. You see Sandberg behind Kratz. Samwell right next to Revere. The Phillies don't have a bench coach this year. Runner goes. 
Brantley throwing on the second is in plenty of time, and Echeverria with a tag. Ah, that's nice, and that's why you can do that, because you don't have much speed at third. The runner, Kratz, wasn't going to go. That throw was on the money. We knew that Revere was going to go early. So did the Marlins, and Rob Brantley fired a seed down there. Tough pitch, too. Pitch was low. Boy, look at that throw. Perfect. So Nolasco has his second out now. And Rollins at the plate with a count 1-0. and oh. Both teams, in fact, every team is, has a bench coach, but the Phillies have moved away from that in that they have added an assistant hitting coach in Wally Joyner, and Sandberg kind of fills the role as Charlie Manuel's bench coach. Yeah, when the, uh, when the Phillies aren't batting and he's in from third base, he kind of stands alongside Charlie. And many feel it's overdue that Sandberg gets a managing job in the big leagues. You tip, your, you tip your cap to a Hall of Famer that decided he wanted to manage, so instead of just glomming on to some organization and, and waiting for a job at the major league level, he went down to the minor leagues and, and managed in the minor leagues. He was in, in the minor leagues with the Cubs organization. Many thought he would get the Cubs job, and he's been in the minor leagues managing AAA for the Phillies. Up the middle, Solano backhands and throws on the run, and Nolasco escapes here in the fifth. Still a scoreless game halfway through. Marlins and Phillies in Miami tonight. Getting ready to go. The impressive numbers at the bottom since 08. Of the 226 All-Stars, 14% have been Dominican born. Bottom of the fifth, Austin Kearns, John Lannon, scoreless game. Yeah, you know, that number's grown. They're been so many academies that organizations have built in the Dominican that uh, those academies have uh, given the young kids down there a, an opportunity and I think it's been great over the years you read so much about the successful Dominican players that go back home and make a difference to the young kids back there Austin Kearns pulls one foul. Rob Brantley and Adani Echeverria 
here in the bottom of the fifth. Now, John Landon's been outstanding. Miami has just two hits against Landon. Kearns lined to the warning track in the second inning in left field. And Kearns a swing and a miss. Landon with a strikeout. He is struck out only two, but those are the last two that he's faced. Good breaking ball and a perfect spot down and in, and he really fooled Austin Kearns. One thing Rob Brantley's trying, saw him in BP, and he's hiked the uh, pant legs up a little bit. He's going uh, Juan Pierre style with the look, hoping to kind of change things up for himself and everybody else. Of course, Tommy Hutton could do that in the broadcast booth if he were wearing socks. But that's a Marlin broadcast tradition. Yes. Ball and a strike. Might have to uh, might have to pack some again on that Cincinnati Minnesota trip though. <laughs> How are the Mets and the uh, Twins doing by yeah, the I way? Think they're shoveling snow right <laughs> now. That was a real concern. The Mets going in there for interleague play against the Twins. And obviously, if any of those games get postponed and they're unable to play all three games, the Mets are going to have to try to find a way to go back to Minneapolis. Well, they're playing tonight, and the Mets are having no problem. They scored five runs in the top of the first. Brantley pulls it and pulls it foul. Daniel Murphy's uh, double. David Wright has doubled. And you know what? All that scoring coming off the aforementioned Vance Worley. Who arrived there in the Ben Revere trade. Brantley, a liner. Rollins lines it up and makes the catch. Echevarria coming up. Marlins and Phils tomorrow night, and it's a terrific pitching magic to begin with. I mean, you've got uh, Jose Fernandez, his home debut, and Cole Hamels. And then it's a Saturday spectacular postgame concert, Willie Chirino, presented by Metro Ford. All you can eat seats start at just $27. Echeverria pulls it foul. Hey, I'd like to see uh, Echeverria get on track offensively because he's played so well. Defensively, he went 0 for 12 in that Atlanta series. 0 for 1 tonight, but he hit the ball well out to short. Ball and a strike to the Marlins Cuban shortstop. Little tapper, Young, across the diamond in time. Currently in Minneapolis, hut 34 degrees.
Friday night, it's the first of three against the Phils for Miami. And Ricky Nolasco doing what he's done his first two starts, pitched well. A no decision his last time out in New York. Of course, he lost in the season opener to Steven Strasburg and the Nationals by a score of two to nothing. We talked about it a few times, Rich, the, the job that the pitchers have when you, you know your offense is struggling. You, you just have to go out there, stay with your game plan. Uh, been real pleased at the way Ricky's done that, all three starts, and he's throwing well. You know, the, the logic sometimes is to, to panic, to press a little, think you have to throw a no-hitter and hit a home run yourself. And uh, Ricky's just pitching his game, making good pitches tonight. By the way, the temperature is supposed to get into the 20s before that game is done in Minneapolis. Chuck Hernandez, Marlins pitching coach. And it is currently snowing. <laughs> All you need is a Bud Grant and the, purp uh, the purple people eaters to yeah. emerge from the old Met where they played uh, both football and baseball. That's where... Yeah, the Joe. Mall of America is now. They've got the home plate right Bring in. Joe Cap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe Cap. Fran Tarkenden. <laughs> Camp Snoopy is a home plate in Camp Snoopy in Mall of America that supposedly is where home plate was at the old Met. Out to right, Kearns makes the catch. And yeah, we were talking about coaching staffs that uh, could participate in an old-timers game and our crack staff helping us out with one a pretty good one the uh, the Dodgers <laughs> you just start with their manager number one Don Mattingly Phil DeMont Mullen is our baseball historian slash statistician and you're right that Dodger staff you start with a hitting coach Mark McGuire not bad. His Man first year as a Dodger hitting coach. Manager Don Mattingly. A guy that whose influence is still felt, I believe, on this Phillies team, Davey Lopes. Tim Wallach, guy that you knew from yeah. your expo Solid days. Solid third baseman. Got some power. Rick Honeycutt was the first setup man, wasn't he? I mean, if, if, if Tony La Russa invented the modern-day bullpen and Eck was kind of the guy that he used... Well, Honeycutt was his eighth inning guy. Yeah, Honeycutt had a long career. Phil outdueling Ed Svita, who, when we go to Philly, is our baseball historian there. Ed up in Philly right now, probably locked into uh, Tom McCarthy and Chris Wheeler, Gary Matthews. Cheese steak and a six pack. Oh, two. Ball and two strikes. If you're Ryan Howard and you're up there and you see the shift, then you even have the second base umpire out there. It looks like there's a whole bunch of guys there. You'll never be able to hit the ball through that shift. He drives it in the right center field. He does hit it over the shift and to the wall. And Howard on that surgically repaired Achilles is into second with his second double of the night. You know, he's running better, but he's still running gingerly and doesn't have a lot of speed. He didn't anyway. But this time he he finds that gap. So two times Ryan Howard has hit a ball right out in that same area. And it's Michael Young now. Line to right, fly to right. Do you realize Michael Young six times had 200 hit seasons with the Texas Rangers? He was one of the, the best kept secrets, I think, uh, over the years in the American League for a long time. Last year he had career lows, 277 average, 312 on base, 370 slash. That was his line last year. But he seems to have perked up 
at least through the first 10 ball games this year. A couple doubles, a triple, a homer, driven in three. I think the impressive thing over the years about Young is that he, whenever was asked by the organization, switched positions. He moved over for an Elvis Andrus. Well, he moved from he moved from second for an Ian Kinsler. Kinsler. They brought in uh, Adrian Beltre at third. Moved across the diamond and played some first. So he, he's played all the infield positions, and he's won a Gold Glove, which uh, should be noted. That was at shortstop in 2008, and it's a, a big series for Chris Valeka, who is a UC Santa Barbara Golden Gaucho. So is Michael Young. Maybe the most successful of all gauchos in the big leagues. Young, Chopper, Echeverria really came and got that ball. That's Perry Hill right there. One of Perry Hill's rules is if the ball off the bat hits the dirt, you go get it because it increases your odds of getting a good hop. See, ball off dirt and see Echeverria coming hard. And you're usually going to get that nicer hop. If you stay back on that ball, that might not be the case. Got a pretty good hit pitch to hit, and there's that ball coming off the dirt, dirt portion in front of home plate. Now, if it hits grass, then you have to be alive and play a little more laterally and realize that that ball is going to scoot and get on you quicker. See, I think a lot of people, when they think about Perry Hill or any infield instructor, feel that it's, okay, once the ball's on the ground, then you do your work. But it all starts well before that. The positioning that, that Hill has, the little program he's got for his infielders, where to line up, depending on pitch, depending on hitter. Dominic Brown. One for two. He's hit the ball hard a couple times. The markings that Perry Hill uses in the infield, beyond the dirt, just on the grass, to let his infielders know where to position themselves. Always the great story of when Louis Castillo was traded to the Twins, I believe. <laughs> Louie wanted to know if they were going to mark the field like Perry did. Of course, the first thing he did was call Mike Redman. Oh, Mike Redman. He said, are we any good? Are we any good? <laughs> <laughs> and Redman said, yeah, we're good. And Louis said, okay, good. Line drive, and that's a base hit. And Dominic Brown has given the Phillies a 1-0 lead. Brown around second. Out of the corner with the ball is Pierre. Brown delivers two hits for Brown. And a 1 0 lead for the Phils here in the sixth inning. Dominic Brown has had nice swings tonight. A well hit ball, first time up in the left field. Had an infield base hit last time up. Ricky got that pitch up. Look at Brantley reaching for the pitch up in the zone. Give credit to Dominic Brown. He stayed on it and drilled it the other way and made it easy. For Ryan Howard to score. Miami is going to walk Lance Nix and pitch to Eric Kratz. Yeah, Mike Redman was a member of the Minnesota Twins when Castillo went to Minnesota. I can remember the, the story the first two or three weeks that uh, Louie was up there, there were three or four times where he would slide into second and roll around and, and act like he was in a tremendous amount of pain. And Ron Gardenhire, had, every time that happened, Ron Gardenhire ran out there like, thinking he had pulled the hamstring. Up the first baseline. Yeah. Running up the first baseline, thinking he pulled the hamstring or whatever. And the third or fourth time, Gardenhire starts out there and Redmond grabs him and says, just don't even go out. He's fine. <laughs> he was one of the guys that Red contacted. We saw Mike Lowell for a weekend in spring training come out, put the uniform on, and just hang out. Uh, terrific friends, longtime friends with Redmond. 
and Luis Castillo was another they just couldn't get the right dates they couldn't figure out the right time and unfortunately we didn't see Louie in spring training but I know Mike wanted him to come in well, hopefully next spring training yeah. Kratz takes a breaking ball for a strike Washington continues to lead Atlanta 4 nothing in the sixth here tonight pitchers duel and the Phillies have the first run ball and a strike Carlos Ruiz has, I guess, 15 games left in that suspension. AJ Ramos. He will be allowed toward the end of that suspension to start playing some games in extended spring training. Echeverria backing up, flips to second in time. But the Phillies get a run. Dominic Brown, an RBI double, and it's 1 0 in the sixth. For moments like this, Tommy, when I can use the words Allison Williams and Pachanga Band in the same sentence. <laughs> you guys were talking earlier about getting the band back together with the Phillies. But uh, we got back together here for Dominican Heritage Night. You remember a few years ago back at Sun Life Stadium, they were here for uh, Latin Heritage Night. The Pachanga Band is back, and I am back with them. But I'm going to step up my game this year. This is David, who is the band leader. The Changa Band is, a, is the first band that the Major Leagues has had that is a, really a Latin band. It's really a Latin band. Uh, it's composed of uh, Brazilian instruments, uh, percussion, Latin percussion, a horn section, uh, hand percussion, and uh, it's, the, it's the only one in the Major Leagues that has been hired by a Major League team. So, uh, oh my God, it was close, it was close. Oh, yeah, but, uh, we've been here for a few years, about four years now with them. Okay. You know, we ha we did the grand opening, and it's always fun to come here and get the people routed up. All right, now, as I mentioned, I made my debut a few years ago. I played the cowbell, a relatively easy instrument. Uh, a person with no rhythm like myself could handle it, but I'm going to step up my game this time. What am I going to be playing? You're going to be playing right here, the, game, the drum I have, what is called a surdo. Okay. It's a Brazilian instrument, but it, it replaces the bass. 
So okay. basically, you're the one who's going to carry the, the beat of the, of, the, of the song. This is a big responsibility. What are yes, some tips that you have for me? Keep up with the time. <laughs> Keep up with the tempo. Okay. If you go slow, they're going to go slow. If you go fast, they're going to go slow. And you can't go yeah. slow. No. Not in... Not Merengue, this, and salsa, and the you, yeah. bend. you can't go slow. Yeah, you gotta take that energizer pill and just go for it. All right, I will get energized, and at the end of this happening, when we go to break, I will play the drum and the pachanga band. Part okay. two with the pachanga band. Okay, Ada the out here. The what? You're gonna be playing the surdo. The surdo. Surdo. There you go. <laughs> Allison Williams, looking forward to it. Allison Williams, one of the bravest sideline announcers in all of television sports. So we have that to look forward to. The Marlins would like to put a run on the board. Boy, and it's uh, a, another tough night unless the Marlins can tie it or go ahead. But Ricky Nolasco, 99 pitches, 61 strikes. He made good pitches all night. Gave up just seven hits and one run. In his six innings of work. Here, shortening to bunt. And it's two and one. And you saw Olivo pinch hitting for Ricky, and Olivo sent one deep to left center for a long out. Here, slaps it foul. JP right now, stuck in a bit of a rut. One for his last 13. But he's got company. The Marlins team wide. Have really struggled with the bats. That's no secret. They've been shut out four times. This is their tenth game of the season. And Pierre takes one for the team. And JP on his way down to first base. Time now for the Coors Light freeze can. This is the throw from Rob Brantley and the tag by. Danny Echevarria. Ben Revere's a fast man. He didn't get thrown out very often. Chuck Hernandez, Ricky Nolasco, as Tommy pointed out. Another solid start for Nolasco. Chuck with a lot of patience with all of his pitchers. Telling Ricky, hey, not a whole lot you can do about that. You went out and did did what you had to do. Now let's see if Miami is able to stir something up with Pierre at first. Solano takes up. Remember, Ruggiano stole the bag on first motion back in the fourth, but then was promptly picked off by Lannon at second. And misses away, and it's 2 0. Oh. Here's your Toyota trend double play combos. Second among active double play duos Derek Jeter, Robinson, Cano. Think about it if Utley over the last couple of years had been healthy, they would lead that list. All of a sudden, Lannon falling behind. 3 and 0 to Solano. Three O pitch. And a strike. And the 3 1 coming. Pierre's on the move. And Solano bangs it foul. Yeah, a little run and hit there with the count three and one. If the pitch isn't in the strike zone, of course, Donovan doesn't have to go after it. So I would imagine, certainly with the Juan Pierre running on that 3 1 pitch, he's going to be running on the 3 2 pitch with one out.
He is running and Solano pulls it foul. Little souvenir. Actually big souvenir. For a little fan. Pierre off again and he's getting quite a workout. Solano pops a foul and out of play. the middle Rollins bobbles and he goes to first with Pierre moving he arrives at second safely Atlanta gets his second out of the inning and here comes Polanco no chance at all for a double play for the Phillies and you give Rollins credit he didn't panic he stayed with it after the bobble and got the out at first base So Polanco, who singled in the fourth, Miami has just two hits, and boy, you have to be alive. Rollins is trying to sneak in behind Juan Pierre. Remember that uh, unorthodox move that Lannon has, and he picked off uh, Justin Ruggiano in the fourth inning. Into left, that's a base hit. Here comes Pierre, and he's going to score. And Miami has tied it. Polanco's second hit. Yeah, that, that feels good for a lot of reasons for Placido Polanco. He gets his second hit, continues swinging the bat well, and is able to drive in a run and tie this game against the team he used to be with. Out over the plate. He's got a lot of things he can do with a pitch up in that area. We've seen him pull balls. He can go the other way. Speed on second, so no play at the plate with Juan Pierre tying it. Ruggiano now. And Landon misses in. No activity in the Phil's bullpen, at least not yet. Marlins pen active. Remember, Olivo pinch hit for Nolasco and fly it out to deep left to start the inning. You have to think, even if Landon gets through this and it's still 1 1, this might be it for him. He's he's closing in on 90 pitches and he's due up first when the Phillies bat in the seventh inning. Three and oh for a team that is struggling to score. And hasn't been in a spot to really drive in runs. A 3-0 pitch. I suspect Ruggiano might be swinging, and yep. he is. That's a that's a great thought, and you're you're right on the same wavelength that I was because when you are having trouble scoring and you only have a few guys in the lineup who can hit one out, you let that guy swing 3-0. And it looked like he got a pretty good fastball, just fouled it off. See what he gets three and one. On a hop, Utley has it, flips to first. Miami gets a run, and as we go to the seventh, Allison Williams leading the Pachanga band. You go, girl. Ready?
going. She hasn't stopped. You wind her up. She just won't slow down. <laughs> That's outstanding. Allison Williams for the entire stretch. Well, she has gone from the social media contessa to uh, Miss Pachanga. The Pachanga queen. Yeah, Pachanga queen. Hey, there's A.J. Ramos making his fifth appearance of the year. He's been busy. He's uh, just getting experience each time he goes out there. And here's a guy who talked about it in the minor leagues was always a closer. A.J. Ramos, 98 career saves in the minor leagues. He had over 25 saves three consecutive years. An ERA in the minor leagues in the low twos. So he showed his ability in spring training. The club knows that he has multiple pitches out there. He can use many different pitches to get out. Ramos is facing Ezekiel Carrera. Herrera, who is a versatile outfielder. Okay, spent a little time in Cleveland the last couple of years. Busted bat, long run, and a nice catch by Ruggiano. Good jump by Justin. One thing about Ruggiano, very good instincts, always has a good first step, terrific angle, and he makes the play. This is one of the tougher balls to get a good jump on, too, because it was hit off the end of the bat. And a lot of times you just kind of have to hold your ground to see if it's hit well or if it's just kind of floating out there. He held his ground, got a good jump, and came and got it. Ben Revere now has single bounced out. And reached on a, a throwing error by Ricky Nolasco on a bunt. Evidently, Rich, the uh, 30 degree temperature and a little bit of snow is not bothering the Mets at all. They now have a 10 to 2 lead against the Twins in Minnesota. John Buck with his sixth home run, a grand slam. It's, you know what? It's only the second inning. They've scored five runs in each inning. The John first Buck has second. 19 RBIs. John Buck has driven in more runs than the Marlins have scored this year. Marlins yes. have scored 17. Revere strikes out. Mike Dunn in the bullpen, and Ramos gets the first out. On the fly ball out from Carrera, and then strikes out Revere for the second out. Rollins climbs in, 0 for 3. It's one of the wrinkles that I'm sure the schedule makers, when they were having to to map out the interleague schedule with an interleague series every night, it's one of the things they had to worry about. Was taking a, a National League team into an American League cold weather city or the reverse, an American League team into a National League cold weather city. City. I think you could carry that uh, a little further. Taking a team out of your division, like the Marlins only play the teams in the West and the Central Division one time. So if you're going to have those teams in, let's say, warmer cities play in colder cities, at least stay in the division because if there are rainouts, you go back and you can play a doubleheader. The Yankees had two games postponed against Cleveland, which is out of their division. They'll probably have to go in on an off day and play double header. 2-2. Two -two. Ramos cranks it up to 94. AJ out of Texas Tech. Pirates are leading the Reds 5-3 in the bottom of the sixth. That came in Pittsburgh. I believe that was an A.J. Burnett start. Did you see the T-shirt? It was A.J. Burnett T-shirt. Kind of a skull and crossbones, heavy metal type look. 3-2. It's 
Solano around it, and Rollins is out, and Ramos goes one, two, three in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch in a 1 1 game in Miami. Well, we've had some good pitchers. We've had Ricky Nolasco dropping in breaking balls. Let Ricky get the base hit. How about that? That was all the offense early on. And then how about the defense? It's been very good. Ricky was pleased. John Lannon, he threw the ball just as well. He had the cutter going. He had the breaking ball. But a pitch that was up, Dominic Brown, who's had good swing, sends it into left field, drove home Ryan Howard for the first run of the game, but you know what? The Marlins respond. Polanco with a base hit. Juan Pierre scores. It's one to one. And you know the good thing about that for Ricky Nolasco, a no decision. Uh, he was the pitcher of record at the time. Could have gotten a loss, but with the Marlins scoring, all of a sudden it's up to the bullpen. And good job by A.J. Ramos in the top half. Antonio Bastardo out of the Phillies bullpen. And Bastardo takes over for John Lennon. I would say, Rich, one of the uh, acquisitions in the bullpen that the Phillies made that uh, helped them over the winter was Mike Adams. Greg Dobbs now. Austin Kearns, Rob Brantley to follow. Dobbs tonight an 0 for 2. Lannon was sharp and Alaska was sharp. That's why it's 1 1 in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, each pitcher threw similar amount of pitches. Lannon was at 92. Gave up just the three hits in one run. Philippe Aumont. Big Canadian right hander. One and two to Dobbs. A couple of years ago, Bestardo was almost unhittable. 64 games, ERA at 264. That ballooned last year. He didn't have as good a command as he had two years ago. Full count. 
There's Kearns. And he elevates a fastball and strikes out Dobbs. This weekend series ends on Sunday. Marlins and Phillies. The four for 54 pack from Pepsi is in play. Four tickets for Kayem B. Franks for Pepsi soft drinks for $54. And fans get a 2013 Marlins calendar courtesy of Leon Medical Centers. Kids can run the bases after the game. Go to Marlins.com. Cards drives one down the right field line. Foul and out of play. Breaking ball for a strike. Cubs bullpen situation still hasn't sorted itself out. Yuji Fujikawa, who has taken over for Carlos Marmol, blew a save. But the Cubs came back and won it. Fujikawa, who saved a lot of games in uh, Japan, <laughs> thought it was interesting with the uh, Kearns going down on a good fastball. Then the other day, I saw the the eighth inning, and Marmol was perfect. He had a nice one, two, three, eighth inning. Bastardo has come in and struck out the first two men he's faced. Now he gets Brantley. With Stanton out tonight, the sore shoulder, you pointed out the bench thin. And so a guy like Bastardo, who comes in as a lefty, can knife through some lefties in this lineup. Dobbs, then the righty Kearns, and now another lefty in Brantley. Oh and two looking at some box scores today a tough outing for Josh Johnson in Detroit yesterday 11 to 1 loss JJ gave up seven hits and six runs in an inning and a third. Brantley swings and misses, and that's exactly what Bastardo does. He knifes right through the seventh inning, striking out the side.
Dominicans in baseball history. The Hall of Fame, Juan Marichal. Tommy noted there will be a few more to follow here coming up soon. Cy Young Awards. Bartolo Colon, Pedro Martinez, three of them. How about MVPs? Bell, Guerrero, Pujols, Sosa, and Tejada. AT&T versus Rewind. The Dominican Dandy. That high leg kick. Statue in San Francisco at AT&T. I saw him myself when I was a small lad at Candlestick Park right there. I got a ch chance to face him a few times at Candlestick Park. He's on the downside of his career, but he, you know, but he still had that deception, the high leg kick. I may have seen you face him as a lad at Candlestick Park. You may have. That, the one shot we saw of the Dodgers was Wes Parker striking out against him. <laughs> <laughs> you got called up the next day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, eighth inning has rolled around. Marlins Park. A.J. Ramos was perfect in the seventh, facing three, getting them all out. And now Mike Dunn takes over. Just looking at a, a list that someone uh, graciously gave to me a few years ago. I actually had 11 at bats, three for 11 against Juan Marichal. With one lefty in the bullpen, and you're looking at him in Mike Dunn, this is where Mike Redmond has to really pick his spots, and this is the spot with uh, Utley, Howard, two lefties, then Young a righty, then Brown a lefty. And I think this is the area where Dunn has to improve from last year getting lefties and a, and a breaking ball like that that'll help especially against the Phillies that's long been known in this division that you need a lefty specialist or a guy that can get lefties out to get through this Philly order not only the Phillies but uh, with the Braves we didn't see Freeman he's on the DL but Freeman McCann who's also hurt Jason Hayward you need lefties at least one you'd like to have two certainly in this division. Dobbs has it. He'll take it himself. Howard hobbling down the line. A couple like, doubles for Howard. Yeah, I like the way Dobbs just said, hey, I got this myself because he knows this Howard's not running well and was able to get over there in plenty of time and eliminate flipping it to the pitcher. The aforementioned Braves are up in Washington and in the eighth inning are trailing 4-1. Tyler Clifford is in for the Nats. Bryce Harper has homered. And the Nats look like they're going to take game one of an early season showdown series in the East. There is Mike Adams. Tommy talked about his addition to the Phillies pen. You know, the Phillies, you look at them, they still have some really good pieces. They have some expensive pieces, too. <laughs> yeah, they do. Their payroll, the Phillies, is almost $160 million. And a lot of that is tied up into three starters in the rotation. And... Some of the, their star players who are at the beginning, the middle, or the back of large contracts. Utley at the, the end of his, Howard in the middle of his. Cliff Lee. Boy, he's off to a hot start. Do 25 million this year. Roy Halladay do 20 million. The Phillies have an option on Halladay next year. Lee is under contract through. 2015. Cole Hamels under contract through 18 at six years, 144 million. 
And many feel that the window of opportunity for this group of Phillies is, is closing. Closing, yeah. Yeah, Hamill's at 19 and a half million this year. Michael Young is in the last year of his contract. Although the Phillies are getting some help on his deal, he's due 16 million, and the Rangers are paying 10 of the 16. Full count. Two outs. Bullpen's been good. Ramos retired the first three. Dunn has set down the next two after six innings of one run ball from Ricky Nolasco. Young to right. Kearns out there tonight. And he makes the catch. And Dunn goes one, two, three. Bottom of the eighth coming up in Miami, one, one. TV is celebrating 11 years. Many of you right now are celebrating while watching MLB.TV. So come back and watch the game. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out-of-market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected device in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. And this is Mike Adams. Well, good uh Good fastball, good curveball. Fastball has some sink. He can struggle with command, but really came to, into his own. I mean, we saw him with Milwaukee a little bit with San Diego, and then Texas. I think really came into his own in San Diego and Texas. 34-year-old right-hander. Echeverria. And he takes a fastball that's up and in. And it's 1 0. So the Marlins here in the eighth start with Echeverria. Chris Coglin on deck. Juan Pierre next in line. It was Antonio Bastardo who pitched the seventh. Echeverria fouls it back. John Landon, much like Ricky Nolasco. Six innings and a run. Rip. Outside corner. One and two. Steve Ciszek in Miami's bullpen. Now I think regardless of the score, we'll see a Ciszek 
in the top half of the ninth. Echeverria reaches out, pokes it into right center field. Revere is there, and he makes the catch. Kind of a nice, uh, nice honor for Tino Martinez, who was just uh, elected to the College Baseball Hall of Fame. Some good guys that he's going to be associated with going in this year. Sal Bando, Arizona State, Roy Smalley. USC, Ralph Gar, Grambling, and of course Tino, uh, the University of Tampa. So he said he'd take uh, a lot more base hits and runs over that honor, though, right now. Marlins Live post game presented by Checkers. We'll have more on that. Allison Williams with a visit from Tino on the honor. Coughlin's first day B as he pinch hits here in the eighth. With all the lefties that Miami has faced, Coughlin is playing time cut considerably. And even against uh, some righties, Justin Ruggiano's been out there. Yeah, because there are some times that you'd, you'd like to see Juan Pierre get that day off, which Mike Redmond's going to be careful with at 35 years old. And, and the guy you would play in left field is Chris Coughlin, but you probably wouldn't do that against a lefty. Now we mentioned that Adams at times can get a little wild. He's 3 and 0 on Coughlin. So Adams and Papelbon, the back end of Philly's bullpen. And Coglin takes down low. He is aboard. One out walk. Here comes Pierre. Pierre hit by a pitch back in the sixth. He is 0 for 2. Miami just three hits, one run, seven hits for the Phillies run. When there are a lot of things you have to think about in a tie game here, the eighth inning, you've got speed to work with in Coglin and Pierre. But any any play you think about putting on, you, you want to make sure the pitcher can throw strikes, and Adams uh, wasn't able to throw strikes to Chris Coglin. Eric Kratz is a very good catch and throw catcher. Just in case Miami's thinking about running with Coughlin. Throughout 40% of base dealers last year. The air seems intent on testing Michael Young at third. He has tried to bunt twice tonight. It's usually something he'll try once or twice a night. Here takes a strike one and one. Joe Espada with the signs. Pierre watching intently, and he's an active leader in sacrifice bunts. Now we talked about the Phillies' third baseman, Michael Young, six times with 200 hits. Juan Pierre. Four times, so six times for Young, 200 hits in the season. Four times for JP. Coglin at first, one-one game in the eighth. 
Adams a high set and then he goes to first. You could see a little uh, activity from Chris Coughlin here on a 2 1 pitch. But you'd feel more comfortable putting on a play like that if Adams was out there pounding strikes. But you know one thing wherever he throws it if Coughlin's on the move Juan Pierre will make contact. Ground ball base hit right field Coughlin around second on his way to third up with the ball is Nix and Miami goes station to station with Coughlin all the way to third and Pierre's first hit of the night or if you're Juan Pierre just find that hole between first and second with the runner on the first baseman holding the runner. JP pulls that ball that opening looks nice when you're a left handed hitter and he pulled it enough where Cotton was able to motor over to third base. Now here's an interesting spot for Mike Redman. You're managing a team that has struggled mightily to score runs. It's a 1 1 game. It's the bottom of the eighth. You've got Solano at the plate. You've got speed at first, speed at third. The last thing you want is Solano to bounce into a double play. So, do you put the game in motion before he does that or give him a chance to drive in the run? I think you put the game in motion, and I also think you eliminate the squeeze. Solano has shown us in his time last year, what we saw in spring training, he's able to hit in situations. Pierre's leaning at first. He bluffs, and Solano takes a big rip. Got the big curveball from Adams. I'm not sure if, if Pierre bluffed or if he just stumbled out of the gate. Middle infield bunched for two. I think if Juan Pierre goes. The Phillies have to make a decision whether to throw through or not. And I agree with you if he goes and is successful then you, you take away a double play possibility. Not running and it's in. And the counts wanted one. As they like to say now a good uh, action count one and one. Meaning a lot of times on a one one count you'll see hit and runs you'll you'll see movement on the bases. Blanco waits. Solano. With the one one coming. Ground ball Utley out there Rollins turn out there. Got to be moving. You got to be moving. And that's exactly what you didn't want to have happen if you're the Marlins. The double play ends the eighth. On to the ninth. Still 1-1. One, one.
first and third and one out. But Mike Adams gets a double play grounder from Donovan Solano. Now Chris Coughlin, who walked in that inning, is going to stay in the game, and he's in left field. And so Coughlin is in the nine spot. Steve Ciszek comes in, and he will hit in the leadoff spot, and he takes over in the spot occupied by Juan Pierre. This is where it's not easy for a relief pitcher to put it together after some rough outings. And for Steve Ciszek, two and a third innings, four hits, four runs. You know, his stuff has been okay, but the command hasn't been there. He has four strikeouts. He's walked only one, but opponents in his brief appearances are hitting 364 against him. So that tells you the command hasn't been there. Well, obviously the Marlins haven't been in a position to use him a lot, but you're right. The, uh, the two appearances have not gone well for him. Both were in cold weather situations. None of that here tonight in Miami. A little bit of humidity. And a fastball from C-Shack for a strike. In the World Baseball Classic, four appearances, two and a third innings. And the RA of 3.86, you can see in three appearances, an ERA that has ballooned up. And he did get the work. He wasn't overworked by any means in the WBC. He certainly impressed his U.S. teammates. He's got Dominic Brown here. I think he gave guys a chance. Guys who maybe had watched him from afar gave guys a chance on that WBC team to learn a little bit more about him. Of course, light, cold, hard fact. Never played a game in April until this year, his fourth major league season. Ron Culpa, the third base umpire, retrieves it. Two and two. Brown's RBI double was the sixth. Phillies have four doubles in the ball game. Ryan Howard has a couple. And Ciszek finishes it with a 94 mile an hour fastball. Well, a good start. He had some good uh, sinking fastballs to Brown in that at bat. Ball was moving well and finally put him away. 94 with a little tail. Jonathan Papelbon is up just in case the Phillies take a lead here. Ciszek misses away. Lance Nix an 0 for tonight. Ball and a strike and an out. Giancarlo Stanton out with a sore shoulder. That also limits what Mike Redmond can do and you would expect and uh, with with the sore shoulder if he's not going to play that he wouldn't be available to hit. He did take batting practice. Yeah we saw him take BP. You and I were standing down there when he was. Bouncer out to second Solano to first. So you wonder if in an emergency say the game was on the line and you needed a bat. You wonder that, but my feeling is if you can do that, then why not play? 
if, if you're going to risk, you're going to risk injury more coming off the bench cold uh, than you are if you're in there getting four ABs. Always goes the other way. First few rounds, <laughs> hits them out the other way with ease. Now Kratz takes a strike. At our first triple play of the season, the Yankees turned a triple play against the Orioles tonight. Holy cow! As Phil Rizzuto would say, look at look at the scoring on that play. Yeah, it looks like a uh, a Powerball number: four six five six five three four. So someone obviously got caught in a rundown. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the couple guys got caught. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll get one guy in a rundown. The Big other couple guys on there running on a pitch. Yep. And you get one one of the guys in the rundown. The other guy's trying to take the extra base, and you get two in the rundown. But apparently. They had three. So if you're with us and you've got your computer out and you're on the MLB at bat 13 app, click on that Yankee game. And go to highlights. Go to highlights. And take a look. Kratz fouls it at the plate. Jose Fernandez tomorrow against Cole Hamels. Ground ball short, Echevarria backing up. And he'll throw the first in time. So Cishek continues what has been a perfect night by the bullpen. 1-1 to the bottom of the ninth. Ninth. Both runs came in the sixth. Both starters good. Making Alaska John Lannon each gave up a run. Both bullpens have been perfect. Miami has put in three innings out of the pen. Philippe Almont comes out of the Phillies pen and he walks into Polanco, Ruggiano, and Dobbs. Three, four, five. Miami had a great opportunity in the eighth, first, and third. One out. And Juan Pierre at first, he didn't run on the first three pitches, and Donovan Solano rolled into a 4-6-3 double play. Philippe Almont, one of those guys they, they say has closer stuff. His fastball is mid-90s, 
Got a terrific breaking ball. I'll go with that. I'll go with uh, Phillies can extend their string of 500 or better seasons to 11. Tommy, if you had a, a hashtag to uh, give out on this one, where would you go? Uh, I would agree with you. We've been agreeing on a lot of these lately. I'm, I'm getting a little concerned about that. Yeah, I think they'll uh, I think they'll be 500 or better. Polanco now. And Omont misses away. Not only does Almont throw hard, he's six seven in the two sixty range. He's from, can be a little frightening up there. From Gatineau, Quebec. And he was traded from the Seattle Mariners to the Phils in the Cliff Lee deal. One of many Cliff Lee deals. And a strike. A lot of good players in, involved in Cliff Lee deals. <laughs> oh, my, and there's being a big. The, the Marlins can counter with that. That's right. <laughs> they'll, they'll substitute in a John Roush for more rebounding. And at 6'11, the tallest player in Major League history. Polanco trying to get on base, the 2 1. Ground ball, the short Rollins up with a hop. And his throw is in time. Some of the guys involved in Cliff Lee deals. Tommy, yeah, give me some names. Tommy wants to know. Yeah. You don't have to say what trade or anything. Just throw out some names. Okay. Well, Brandon Phillips, Grady Sizemore. That was in the Bartolo Colon deal mm -hmm. when, when Lee first went from the Expos to the Indians. Breaking ball misses. The Indians got a slew of guys when they traded to send Lee to Philly. None of them really have panned out. Lou Marzen, Jason Knapp, Jason Donald, Carlos Carrasco. Then Oma. J.C. Ramirez, and then Texas, Justin Smoke, Seattle was trying to reload their minor league, Blake Beaven. Philly signed him as a free agent. Did Cliff Lee. So there you go. Cliff Lee's been traded a lot. And there are a lot of people who feel he continues on pitching the way he has, the way he started this year, if the, if the Phillies are out of it, by the uh, trading deadline, he could go again. Someone's going to have to suck up a lot of money if they make that deal. He's due 50 million in 14 and 15 combined. That's a lot of uh, iron. It's a lot of iron. Did you play golf with Eck over the? Uh, Winter, that's usually I, I did not because he had rotator surgery. <laughs> he was on the DL. 3-1. <laughs> Ruggiano takes outside and he is aboard. So there's your winning run and Ruggiano has been Miami's best base stealer this year. He has three stolen bases. Dobbs is up. Second lefty in that Phillies bullpen, Jeremy Horst, loosening up. Major League Baseball has announced, and this is breaking news. Carlos Quinton, an eight-game suspension. Jerry Hairston, a one-game suspension. And a strike to Dobbs. 
One former Philly, Placido Polanco, has driven in the only run. Chance for Dobbs. Maybe an extra base hit. He could do the same thing and send his team home a winner. Dobbs had just a terrific year, the World Championship season for the Phils. Ground ball, Rollins to the bag, fires to first, and the Phillies get another double play. On to the 10th, 1-1, Miami and Philly. Game Phillies Marlins extra innings for the fish and the fills and so the battle of the pens continues John Roush is next in line and Roush comes out of Miami's pen where AJ Ramos Mike Dunn and Steve Ciszek have paved the way with three perfect innings of relief yeah that's the uh, the impressive thing about the bullpen tonight not only have they Throwing shutout innings, they haven't given up a, a base run. So John Roush hopes to uh, continue that trend now. Chuck Hernandez has to be pleased, and I think not just tonight, but certainly with his starters overall to start the season. That's the among the frustrations that uh, Miami has right now is the fact that they've been able to get. Pretty good starting pitching, but the total lack of runs has meant a one and eight start. Kevin Franzen stands in. Heavily pine tarred is his Philly helmet. Did a nice job after his uh, call up from Triple A. He was with the Phillies last year, 55 games. He had 338. Didn't like that first pitch strike. Franzen, who came up in the San Francisco Giants organization. Slow breaking ball, and he fouls it off. <laughs> now that, you know what? You just use the duct tape. Duct tape's good for, for any changes. That's right. Fastball up, Franzen takes it. Time called.
And Franzen goes down. So Roush keeps the line moving. Now he's going to have to deal with a little bit of speed. If the Phillies get Revere on, even if they get Rollins on, Roush a little slow to the plate. So you would expect they would be on the move if they get on base. Roush misses away and Revere in the leadoff spot. A one for four night. Ryan Zimmerman with a costly throwing error in the ninth inning with two outs and Drew Storen trying to close that game against Atlanta. It's now tied. Yeah, the Braves had the bases loaded. Four four game. Three and zero oh to Revere. And Roush catches the inside corner. It's three and one. A run on seven hits for the Phillies. A run on four hits for Miami. The bullpen for the Marlins at times has struggled early this season. Starters ERA. Has been down in the twos. Bullpen ERA up in the eights. That's funny. You get a group of uh, guys in the bullpen, and it takes a, a few weeks for them to kind of get cohesive down there. Revere cranks one into right field, a base hit. Uh, here comes that situation. Now you have to be careful with him at first base. But remember. Back in the fifth inning, he was thrown out on a terrific throw by Rob Brantley. Rollins. It's a good combination, too. You've got a guy that can handle the bat and speed it first. And Roush goes over. A lot of ABs with the Roush on a variety of teams in this division. The Marlins, of course, now. It seems like he's been with just about everybody in this division. Nationals. Mets. He hasn't pitched for the Phillies. And I don't think he's pitched for the Braves either. No. He hasn't pulled the full Hurgis. <laughs> Matt Hurgis, a former Marlin, pitched for, I believe, pitched for every all team. The teams in the West. In the National League West. Yeah, he was with all the teams in the West. Dodgers, Giants, Rockies. Did he pitch for the Diamondbacks? Hurgis? We'll have to check that. I know Padres, Dodgers, Giants, Rockies. Brantley wanting to make sure that they're on the same page. Certainly make Roush aware of Revere at first base. Roush gets a strike. One and one. Rollins an 0 for 4. Damage from the Phillies in the middle of the lineup with Dominic Brown and Ryan Howard getting the big hits. Of course, in a 1 1 ball game, there aren't a whole lot of big hits to go around.
in the air. And Polanco is there. Surprised Revere wasn't running with Rollins up there. No, the Marlins in, in a couple of situations have not run. That's not to say that uh, Revere won't be rolling here. And Roush doing his best to keep him close. Matt Hurd just Dodgers, Padres, Giants, Arizona, Colorado. Seven games for Arizona and 05. Just before coming to the Marlins. So that gives them the entire National League West, right? Mm -hmm. Also pitched for Cleveland, the Marlins, and Montreal. 11 years in the big leagues for Matt Hurgis. Brother in law of Todd Hollinsworth, former Marlin. Run. Todd Hollinsworth, current baseball commentator on uh, XM radio. You know, I tune, tune into XM. I hear Todd Hollinsworth. I hear Cliff Floyd. Our own Cliff Floyd. He'll always be our own Cliff Floyd. Here Cliff Floyd on XM. See Preston Wilson on MLB Network. We like to spread the wealth. One one. Roush with a fastball that's up. It's a game that uh, got out of the shoots pretty quickly. You had Nolasco and Landon trading zeros. Both teams got a run in the sixth, and that's it. And here we are in the tenth. Both managers have been a, a bit reluctant to use their speed here. Revere's at first. Utley at the plate. Two one coming. And it's up and in. It's three and one. First time the Marlins have gone extra innings this year. Fastball, fly ball, deep but curling and foul. Certainly home run distance. But Utley pulled the trigger a little bit too fast. Got that fastball up in the zone. I think you'll see the power. A little better for Mutley this year with the legs healthy. Without a doubt. Full count. Runner will be on the move. And Utley hammers it into the corner easily around third and on his way to the plate is Revere. He can fly. He's going to score. Utley's thinking three. Digging for third. Solano's throw. Safe. Boy, what a difference in watching Utley run compared to the last couple of years. No kidding. Wow, that, that really stood out to me. Obviously, the, the triple, the RBI, and the, the speed of Revere scoring and putting the Phillies ahead. He got a couple of good pitches to hit. He gets another one up in the zone and just hammers this one. Stays on top of it, keeps it fair. 
and gets it into that deep corner. And watch the speed of Revere. I don't know why he's looking at that point. There's no reason to. He just needs to pick up his third base coach, who's got a whole lot more experience than him. Yeah, I mean, with two outs. Yeah, they're two out, too. I think Charlie Manu just uh, whispered that into his ear. A little more gently than you, maybe, though. <laughs> Howard is in the process of getting walked intentionally. Michael Young will face Rauch. And the string of perfect relief ends here in the 10th. Howard aboard. Young, who is 0 for 4, comes up. Now the Phillies will get their big closer, Jonathan Papelbon, ready. Oh, and one. See the career numbers for Young. Back to Rauch. Diving stop. Echevarria safe. Solano's foot wasn't on the bag, and Solano comes to the second base umpire. Tom Hallion. To argue his point, Hallion didn't think he got his foot on there. It was an incredible stop by Echeverria. The only question is, did Solano get his foot on the bag? And here's a look. Boy, this is a great effort by Echeverria. I didn't think he had to play anywhere. The flip, and it looked like by the time Solano reached with the second step, Howard was there. The first try, I don't think he was on the bag. He's a little short there, a little short there. And by the time he reaches for the third time, Howard finally gets in. And Hallion had a perfect angle and the best look. What a great effort by Danny Echeverria. Just unfortunate that Solano couldn't quite get to the bag. He was going backwards trying to find it. It's not an easy play. But on that, it'll be an infield base hit. And an RBI for Young and another run for the Phillies. And Dominic Brown drives one in the gap right center. Kearns is there and makes the catch. The Phillies strike for two in the tenth. Jonathan Papelbon, one of the better closers in the game, comes in for the Phillies. Miami the Marlins had first and third and one out in the eighth bounce into a double play in a 1-1 game bounce into a double play to finish the ninth and the Phils put two on the board in the tenth and now they turn it over to Jonathan Papelbon the 32 year old Jacksonville native the star at Mississippi State and of course 
A great run in Boston, six years as the Red Sox closer. A five-time All-Star, including last year with the Phillies. Part of those World Series teams. And certainly is a, a quality closer. One of the top in, in the game and a, and a character in his own right, too. But has great stuff Jonathan Papelbon does. Fastball's live. He'll use a breaking ball. And then he likes to get you with the splitter. So here's Kearns with Brantley and Echeverria to follow. You wonder if Stanton is available. If the Marlins get a couple runners on here in the 10th. We've had shots during the game of John Carlo just sitting there and I would imagine he's not available if he were available. He'd be in that little back area uh, getting himself loose. John Mayberry has gone into the ball game. He's in right Kearns fouls it back. And Papelbon is out in front 0 and 2. It's one of the great shots in uh, Red Sox history, Fenway Park, of Papelbon celebrating a world championship doing the, uh, is that guy's name, Michael Flatley, the Lord of the Dance, the Irish jig? Yeah. Oh, 2 Fly ball left, and Brown is there, and he makes the catch. So the Phillies have an out here at the bottom of the 10th. Marlins down to their last two outs. Brantley and then Echeverria, and then Coughlin. Bond trying to pick up save number two on the year. He's another one of those Phillies that you talked about. You know, the window of opportunity closing, and they've got a very high payroll of close to 160 million. Applebond's in the second year of a four year, $50 million contract. Say, guy, a closer. Off to a great start. Sergio Romo. The Giants has six saves already. Of course, took over for Brian Wilson when he went down with the Tommy John surgery. Brantley to center. Revere makes the catch. And so there are two outs. Here comes Echeverria. This series ends on a Sunday. The Marlins and the Phillies at 110. You get the Pepsi 4 for 54 pack, including four tickets, four Cayenne beef franks, and four Pepsi soft drinks for $54. Fans get a 2013 Marlins calendar courtesy of Leon Medical Centers. And kids... You can run the bases after the game. Go to Marlins.com. Here's Echeverria. To right, and just like that, Papelbon shuts the door, and the Phillies win the ball game 3-1. to one. Jonathan Papelbon saves it. Philippe Amon. Gets the win. And Miami drops the first. And they lose their fourth straight on this homestand. The Fish are now 1-9. 3-1 the final for the Phils.